Amen. We give God praise and thanksgiving this morning. Amen. Amen. As our male choir was encouraging us, come on and bless the Lord with me. Amen. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Let us clap our hands together. Amen. Amen. And bless the Lord this morning. I want to welcome you to our 10 o'clock worship service here at Lee Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, we never take for granted that you may have other options for your in-person and also for your online worship experience. That's why we always want to make sure we say thank you for joining with us on this fifth Sunday of Eastertide season. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us now usher into the presence of the Lord with our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. to worship this morning. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Know this, the Lord is God. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving. Go into God's courts with praise. For the Lord is good. God's mercy is everlasting. Let us rejoice in the Lord, for we are God's people. Amen. Let us come before God's presence with a song. And this morning, our opening hymn is hymn number 25, Holy Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning our songs shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Without further lining, let us sing opening hymn number 25. Oh. 
song to the Lord, reminding us of his power and of his mercy. Amen? Amen. Let us be led in prayer this morning by our steward, Sister Bridget Clark.
Jesus all my troubles and on him I cast my every care you know he took away my trouble and right now My sorrow. And right now, well, I feel all right, all right, all right. All right. I feel all right, all right, all right. sickness and on him I cast my every care he took away my symptoms and right now I feel alright I feel alright Whatever troubles you may have had this morning, whatever troubles you had last night, amen, this right, is the place for you to feel all right, amen, for you to come in and lay your burdens down and let God lift up your spirit, amen, amen. amen. Uh, we have this morning a New Testament scripture reading and our gospel reading coming from Acts chapter number 11 verses 1 through 18, and John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35, respectively. Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18, and I would ask that you would turn there with me in your Bible. We're going to be in the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, the scripture will also be on the screen for you. Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Let us now hear the word of the Lord. Now when the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God, 
So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheep coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered up the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing his, in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had been upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Amen. The word of God reminds us of God's spreading word that goes to all generations and does not make a distinction between race and, and gender. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Our gospel reading comes from the gospel of John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. And again, in the New Revised Standard Version, uh, I'd ask you to turn there with me and read along with us. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God had, has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Amen. We praise God for a reminder of his commandment to love each other as he has loved us. Amen. Amen. From all that dwells below the skies of the creator's praise arise. From all that dwells below the sky, let the Creator's praise arise. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land. By now hear the words of Christ our Savior when he was asked what is the greatest commandment and he said to him you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart with all of your soul and with all of your mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets glory be to the Father Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, 
remain standing as we reaffirm our faith by repeating the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence it shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for a wonderful selection from our male choir, following which we will have our sermon for today. So wonderful, yes, he is. Wonderful, oh. he's so wonderful. I know he will, he will provide. 
Praise God for the reminder of his greatness, amen, and his wonderfulness, amen. We thank God for the music ministry guiding us this morning, giving us an opportunity to hear God's word through song, amen. Let me direct your attention to our sermon text for today, coming from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and I ask that you would follow with us as we read our scripture this morning, starting with verse number 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come this morning once again thanking you for last night's lying down. Thank you, God, for this morning's rising up. We come, oh God, now we need a word from you. God, we need to hear from you, God. We need a word from you, God, that will calm our hearts. A word, God, that will focus our minds. A word, God, that will remind us of your love. A word, God, that will remind us of the commandment to love one another. So send your word, God. Send it with speed, Lord. Send it with power, God. Send it with direction, God, that our lives may be transformed and changed by your word. This is God as I pray in your son, Jesus the Christ's name. Amen. Amen. For a few moments, we want to look at this 14th chapter of John and focus on this theme for today. 
the power of loving God. The power of loving God. Doing what is right is not as easy as it seems. We know what God's commandments are. We know what God has laid out. As a matter of fact, our lesson yesterday in church school talked about a moment in time when Paul was talking to the members of the church in Galatia, and they were having some difficulty because the Jewish Christians were concerned about whether they knew the law enough, whether they knew that the law was being sent to keep them with guardrails, to keep them from straying from left and right. And we also know what is right and what is wrong, absent of even the Ten Commandments. We, in our lives, have been given by our parents and given by adults and given by authority figures things that are right and things that are wrong. And again, it's not as easy as it seems, but when you have the motivation to do right, it becomes easier. That is something that is not always brought up in conversation about making the right choices. Take, for example, the choice to stop at a red light and wait until the turn is green before you proceed. It's difficult if you have some place to be. And it seems as if that red light has gone on and on. And, and I know nobody in here or watching has ever done this, but I've seen folks go on through the red light. Amen. I've seen folks even turn right and come back around where the light is green because they could not wait for the light to turn green and they found themselves impatient. The task becomes easier though if there's a police officer sitting right there helping and encouraging you to go ahead and obey the law. So it is the case with obeying God's laws. It's not always easy because it requires us to do things that are the opposite of our emotional state at the time. If somebody treats us poorly, our emotional state impresses upon us the necessity to respond in a way that assures them that we are not pleased with what they have done and if they don't uh, stop doing it, we will then treat them as poorly as they've treated us. God's law, however, says treat them right, even if they treat you poorly. God's law is odd because it says love your enemies. All right. God's law is odd because it says give your coat to somebody you may not even know. God's law talks about this good Samaritan who didn't even know the man but found the man and bandaged him up and took the man to a hotel and told the owner, whatever you need to spend, charge it to me. God's law is odd because it is the opposite of how we think. It's not easy. But with the right motivation, we can do anything we set our minds to. And that's what loving God does. It motivates us to keep God's law. It gives us a reason to do what is the opposite of our emotional state. But it does more than that. Jesus understood that the power of love could do miraculous things. And he wants us to tap into that power. And so Jesus gives us three things that the power of loving God will do for us. The first thing is this. It helps us keep God's law. Look at what verse 15 says. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Seems simple. Seems easy. Uh, Seems as if it's no problem doing that. But look at what Jesus is saying to us. Loving God gives us the motivation to keep his law unlike anything else in the world. Look at what Jesus says. He said, listen, I don't care what you say. All right. I want to see what you do. 
You can tell me all day long you love me, but I need you to show me by keeping my commandments. Yes, you can tell me that you're not going to do a certain thing. Yes, you can tell me that you're not going to go a certain place. But when it comes down to the action, I need to see that. And I'm linking your obedience to the demonstration of love. And when you think about it, from that perspective of our obedience being a reflection of our love, it changes the entire conversation. Whether we want to admit it or not, we find ways to make sense out of sinning. Say that again. Whether we want to admit it or not, don't look to your neighbor left or right, look at me. Amen. We find a way to make sense out of sinning. And I've said it all once before and I'll say it again. We are all recovering addicts to sin. We don't see ourselves in that manner, but how else do you explain the fact that we oftentimes do the things that we know we shouldn't? All right. All right. How do you explain it without saying it's an addiction if we know it's going to harm us and we do it? What else can it be but an addiction if we know that it's wrong and in some instances told God just yesterday All right, fix it up. we would never do it again. All right. And yet find ourselves right in the, you don't understand, Reverend, when they ran up on me and said what they said, I had to respond. Come on, come on. I get it. I understand. <laughs> Making sense out of sin. You don't understand. I had no other choice but to do what I did, making sense out of sinning. All right. I was just riding along in the car. I didn't know we were going to that place. I was just a passenger making sense out of sinning. I don't know how their test ended up on my table, and I just went ahead and wrote the answers down. I mean, what was I supposed to do? I had to pass Fix the class. Making sense out of sinning. But it's not just us because Paul admits his own addiction when he says the good that he knows he should do is not what he finds himself doing. But the evil that he knows he shouldn't do is what he finds himself doing. And then he says, oh, wretched man, what is wrong with me? He said, it's the sin that lies within me. And Paul gives us insight into our own situation. We fight against sin until we can fight no more, and then we give in. We make excuses for our own behavior, and yet we don't make the same excuse for others when they behave toward us that way. It is our sinful addiction that we are constantly fighting against, but there is hope for us. Amen, somebody. There is hope for us because Jesus gives us the key to motivate us. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. How does that help us? Well, when you think about the love that Jesus has for you, it should make you and I want to do right by him. Right. When you think about the fact that Jesus put himself through the ordeal of being born like you and I, went around loving people like God wants them to love, even though they hated him, allowing himself to be crushed, and allowing himself to be beaten, allowing himself to be crucified, it should make us want to do right by him. But here's the problem. We face the same dilemma that Jonah faced. Y'all know Jonah, Jonah in the well. Jonah got into the well because God Fix says to up. Jonah, Jonah, you are a good preacher. When you preach, people join the church. When you preach, people believe me. When you preach, people are converted. Jonah said, yes, Lord, I am. And so, Lord, send me wherever you want me to go. He said, well, I want you to go to Nineveh. He said, well, Lord, I don't really like the Ninevites. <laughs> Fix it up. And I know if I preach to them, they're going to be converted. And then I got to love them like you love me. Mm. Jonah didn't mind loving birds and fish. He didn't mind loving lions and goats and even snakes and sharks. But he drew the line when it came to loving people that God had created 
that didn't like Jonah. We are the same way. We find it easy to love everything else in God's creation but people who treat us wrong. We excuse our behavior and oftentimes appeal to God's grace like it's a vending machine to dispense forgiveness and grace like a Sprite or a bag of chips. We run up and push the button asking for forgiveness. We run up and push the button asking for grace as if God's going to keep on vending it to us, but we miss the opportunity to tap into the love of God and make ourselves better people. But look deeper at what Jesus is saying. If you love me, keep my commandments. All right. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love that he died for you on Calvary, treat everybody right. If you love that he healed somebody in your family at some point in your lifetime, then treat everybody right. If you love that he moved in your favor and got you that job, then forgive people and treat everybody right. If you love that he helped you keep your sanity when the world was trying to drive you mad, then treat everyone else right. If you love that he has kept danger from your household, then treat everybody right. If you love that he answered your prayers and helped your child out of a difficult situation, treat everybody right. If you love that he kept your finances from going down even in a pandemic and treat everybody right. If you love that he kept you safe even in 2022 and 2020 and 2021, then treat everybody right. See, the whole point is this. How can you love God and not love his creation? How can you love God or say you love the Lord and not love your brothers and sisters? How can you say you love God and not keep his commandments? Jesus said, if you want to show me that you love me, love each other. If you want to demonstrate that you love me, love your neighbor. If you want to show me you love me, love your enemy. If you want to demonstrate you have love, love those who treat you wrong. Just that simple. Second thing is this. It helps us know God more. Verse 17 says, this is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. The second point is that it helps us know God more. As much as we think about it, and as much as we think we know about God, there is so much more that we could know. Jesus tells us by, that by loving God, we can know more about God. Loving God allows us to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives at all times. The Holy Spirit was promised by Jesus as a way to keep us from thinking we had done it all by ourselves. Jesus understood that the disciples would be afraid to lead the world in the right way to live. He understood that you and I would be afraid to lead the world in the right way to live. And so he promised us and them more power. We know what's right. But sometimes we're afraid to do what's right because we don't want to be ostracized. That's true. Amen. Amen. We know what Amen. is right, but we don't want to be cast out. Amen. Children in school know what to do, but they don't want to be called names in the classroom. Even adults know what to do is right, but they don't want to be called names by their adult kids. And so what do we do? We sit back and we act like we don't know what's right. We are peer pressured into not doing more. So Jesus says, I know you're going to have these problems, so I need to give you some more power. The Holy Spirit was promised by Jesus so that we could know more about God. When you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you have the chance to experience the power of God's truth in action. It is the Holy Spirit that teaches us how to be better people. Yes, all of us are still learning how to be better. Brother Joe Lee used to say, we got to learn to be a Christian. You don't just become one. You got to learn 
to be a Christian. Every day we're learning how to be a Christian. Being a Christian is a lifetime thing. You don't just master it in all in one day, Fix it up. or one month, or one year. New members class doesn't make you the best Christian. Knowing your church does not make you the best Christian. <laughs> Getting ordained does not make you know everything about God. Being in the choir doesn't make you know everything about God. Being in the deaconess does not assure you know everything about God. Being in the lay organization doesn't give you everything about God. Being a missionary doesn't give you everything about God. We got to constantly learn about who God is. And the way we do it is a lifetime of learning. It takes a lifetime to get it all. We are constantly learning about God even when we don't want to. The Holy Spirit teaches us, watch this y'all, how to handle stress in our lives by trusting that God is willing and able to move in our lives to handle things we cannot handle. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to handle disappointment by trusting that when God closes a door, it might be for our own good and it may be a blessing in disguise. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to handle success by reminding us that we did not get there on our own. This is the lesson David had to learn. He didn't get to be king by himself. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to handle other people's success by reminding us that we should cheer on others even when we haven't had our breakthrough yet. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to be patient and wait on God to move because some battles you can't fight no matter how strong you think you are. This is the lesson Moses had to learn. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to wait on God to answer our prayers like Daniel waited 21 days to hear from God. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to stay faithful to God even in difficult times. This is the lesson the three Hebrew boys had to learn. What is the Holy Spirit trying to teach you? What is the Holy Spirit trying to show you? What about God are you not getting and the Holy Spirit is trying to teach you but you are resisting? When you love God, you know more about God. The final thing is this. Helps us see more of God. The final power of loving God helps us see more of God. Look at what Jesus says in verse 21. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me and those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. There are benefits to loving God and following his commandments. When we love God more, it opens up our eyes to the presence of God in places that the rest of the world can't see. When we love God, Jesus says that we will be loved by the Father. Look at that sentence. Those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. We need more of God in us and less of us in us. <laughs> and when we love God, we invite him to put more of him in us. When we love God, we don't mind living according to his commandments. When we love God, we don't mind looking beyond the faults of others and seeing their need. When we love God, we don't mind going the extra mile to help somebody. When we love God, we don't mind uh, the trouble that comes in our way. When we love God, we even see God in difficult times. Jesus says, if you love me, You'll be loved by the Father, and I will love you and reveal myself to you. That's the good news, church. Don't miss that. Jesus says, I will love them and reveal myself to them. You think you've experienced God? Just wait until you start loving people like God loves you. You think you've experienced God? 
Just wait until you surrender to God all the negative thoughts you have in your mind. You think that you've experienced God? Just wait till you start looking beyond people's faults and seeing their needs. The Bible says that Jesus will reveal himself to us. In other words, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and our imagination can't conceive what God has for those who love him and are called according to his word. You want a breakthrough in your life? Start loving like Jesus. You want some restoration in your life? Start loving like Jesus. He will reveal himself in your life if you keep his commandments. He will show up when the storms of your life come in. He will show up when the enemy tries to defeat you. He will show up when others try to take your day away from being good to bad. He will show up when sickness tries to keep you down. Yes, he will. He will show up. Yes, he will. He will show up. Anybody know he'll show up? Anybody know he will show up? Just ask Mary and Martha and Lazarus. He will show up. Just ask blind Bartimaeus. He will show up. Ask the woman at the well. He will show up. Ask Jay Harris and his daughter. He will show up. Ask the thief on the cross. He will show up. He'll reveal himself to you. He'll make your day brighter. He will show up. Say yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Somebody say yes. Yes, he will. Somebody say yes. Yes, he will. Say yes. He will show up. He will show up in your life if you let him. He'll reveal himself to you like no other time before. You'll experience this newness of God in your life. You haven't seen all the love God has for you yet. God loves you so much, he died on the cross for our sins. He hung there and bled out for our lives. And yes, he still wants to reveal much more of himself to you. But you've got to love one another like he has loved you. you got to love. Oh, Dr. King said, I've decided to love because hate is too heavy a burden to carry. Let that hate go. Let that evil thought go. Love as God loves. Amen, somebody. Let us stand all over the church. Perhaps there's one here today who wants to experience the power of God in their life. Somebody who wants to give their life to God. Perhaps you've been trying to do it by yourself. And God is saying, I'm here for you. Perhaps you want to join a church, we offer you the chapel. Perhaps you need prayer, we will pray for you and with you. Today may be your day to transform your life. If you're watching online, put it in the comment section and we will be in touch with you. As we sing an invitational hymn, 351, the songwriter simply says this. I once was lost in sin. But Jesus took me in. A little life in heaven filled my soul. Just a little talk with Jesus made it right. Jesus took me in. Bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our trouble. Hear our faintest cry.
Jesus will make it right. Amen. All right, we have birthdays and I think an anniversary this week. Let me make sure I read this right. Birthdays this week, we have Anthony Bowers Jr., May the 19th. Aaliyah Williams, May the 19th. Keisha Davis, May the 20th. And Dusty Walker III, May the 21st. Let us sing happy birthday to them. Anniversary. Let me see what day it is. <laughs> right. What day is that? All right. Pastor Harold Love Jr. and First Lady Leah Love on May the 18th. Amen. <laughs> All right. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. All right, it's time, three years. Three years. <laughs> Two years in COVID and a tornado, and, and, and so now we got a free year. All right, it is time to bless our offering. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the basket out there so that you all can put your offering out there as you leave if you haven't already put it in. And this is our way of trying to keep down the, the touching of, of so many people with the basket. So the basket will be back out there for you. But I'm going to ask Brother Hayes to come forward without the basket so we can bless the offering. Amen. 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 And he has business for all right. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the chance to give back to your portion of what you have blessed us with. We pray, God, for those who gave and those who did not but had the desire to do so. We ask, God, that this offer may be used to continue the mission work of this, your church. To God's I pray in your son, Jesus the Christ's name. Amen. Amen. If you still want to give online, you can give uh, through our PayPal on the website. Uh, also, you can mail in your offering or you can drop it off at the church. And so uh, we want to say also, if you're in the sanctuary today and you have not had a chance to put your offering in, you can put it in as you exit out. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, we have two visitors with us. We have Megan Gosa. All right. Visiting with us. Glad to have you here with us this morning. And we got a special guest. We got uh, Carlicia Hunter and Azir's in the back, I think. He's back there walking around a little bit. He, she and he have come to visit with us this morning. Amen. That's, that's the newest uh, great nephew. All right, so you saw the response he was giving during the sermon, I'm sure. <laughs> Trying to talk back a little, all right, to encourage his uncle to keep on preaching. Amen. All right, so glad to have him here with us this morning. All right, announcements. <clears throat> Let me go through these announcements, please. All right. Uh, we have two more graduations. Uh, Eliana Blash graduated from Belmont University last weekend with honors. Amen. <laughs> with a Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental Science. Also, uh, Sierra Elise Driver graduated from Vanderbilt University this past Friday. <laughs> with a Bachelor of Arts and a major in Studio Art. 
Amen. So I want to congratulate her on that. Brother Juan Cook was awarded the TSSAA 2022 Coach of the Year for Softball District 10. All right. And of course, the pastor, first lady, and members of Lee Chapel Amy Church would like to congratulate Dr. Roger Bielen on the completion. Amen. And opening. Amen. Of the AME Church Publishing House. Amen. Amen. They have a whole weekend of activities. I think Friday night worship and then Saturday with the dedication and then Sunday for a service. And, and uh, if you did not get a chance to register, you can still probably view it online uh, for the dedication. We want to encourage you to continue to pray for uh, Dr. Bieland as he continues to do good work over there at the publishing house. Also, the South District Conference Church School Convention is going to be June the 3rd and 4th. Friday, June 3rd is the devotion service. It's at St. Paul Amy Church in Columbia. It's at 7 p.m. And Bishop Byfield will actually be the preacher for that event. It's also, it's a hybrid event. It's in person and hybrid. On Saturday, June the 4th, there is the actual church school instruction period. And that's going to be at the Horace O. Porter School in Columbia, Tennessee. Classes for all ages, 8.30 to 12.30, a hybrid for adult class, mask are required. Lunch and fellowship at Fairview Park and also... Uh, we'll email this. We'll mess up everybody so you can see it. The link for the Zoom link on, is on there. Registration will open soon. So we want to encourage you to support the South District work in the church school convention. All right? All right. And I think those are all the announcements we have. Any others? Oh, I thought you had one, Kim. All right. Very good. Um, also want to announce. Uh, that we are going to start, and I, I announced it on the steward board call, we are trying to uh, watch the, the variance and make sure that we are still in compliance with everything, and we'll have a conversation about re-entry and what it may look like for other modes of entry besides vaccination cards. And so we're going to start meeting with the re-entry team to see what that might look like to keep our protocols safe, though, but to make sure that we also expand our opportunity for everyone else who may not be able to take the vaccine to be able to attend worship. But we'll, we haven't made a decision yet, but we're going to be working soon with the reentry team in that regard. All right? And I think those are all the announcements that I have. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> today, let us be reminded of the words of Jesus, that we can know the power of loving God. It will transform our lives. It will motivate us to do what is right. If you love me, keep my commandments. It will help us keep God's law. It will help us to know God more. And it'll help us see more of God. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may they rest, may they rule, and may they abide with us both now and forever. And the people of God all sang.